Today, the Quad Foreign Ministers have reaffirmed our support for the principles of openness, the protection of national sovereignty and the observance of rules and fair play. Our region is in a period of rising strategic uncertainty. The rules and norms that have provided a foundation for our stability and hence our prosperity are under pressure, in particular from authoritarian regimes. The Quad is a grouping with a positive and ambitious agenda. We continue to support the centrality of ASEAN, including to advance practical implementation of ASEAN's outlook on the Indo-Pacific. The Quad has made practical commitments and we're delivering on them. We've delivered over 500 million vaccine doses under the Quad Leaders' commitment and ensured they reach the people who need them. Australia will bolster the efforts of the Quad Vaccine Partnership by making a further investment through our regional health security initiative for the Indo-Pacific. Australia, in our actions, works to support a world order that favours freedom, where rules, not power and coercion, resolve disputes. Today in Melbourne, our overarching focus was on the Indo-Pacific. We agreed to strengthen Quad cyber and counter-terrorism cooperation, including by coordinating efforts to address the threat of ransomware. We discussed humanitarian and disaster response and vital infrastructure delivery, which is climate adapted and climate resilient in consultation with our partners. We agreed to boost maritime security support for Indo-Pacific partners to strengthen their maritime domain awareness and ability to develop their offshore resources to ensure freedom of navigation and overflight, and to combat challenges such as illegal fishing. I'm delighted that Japan has offered to host the next Quad Leaders Summit in the first half of 2022. Let me finish, in, to finish my remarks, and I'll ask my colleagues to indulge me just for a moment. Many of you will know that uh, today was the holding of the state memorial service for the passing of a former Australian foreign minister and leader of my, parla my parliamentary Liberal Party, Andrew Peacock. I think if Andrew Peacock was here now and able to see a Quad Foreign Ministers meeting being held in person in Melbourne after two years of a global pandemic and only two years after the first in-person meeting of the Quad Foreign Ministers, He'd be immensely proud of Australia and our Quad partners for what we have worked to deliver, for the practical cooperation that we've engaged in and for our strong focus on our friends and partners in ASEAN. It gives me great pleasure to ask Minister Jay Shankar to make some remarks. Thank you, Marish. Uh, for Mr Payne, let me um, first of all thank you for hosting what it was truly a productive meeting of the Quad Foreign Ministers. Uh, we also had an opportunity earlier in the day to meet collectively with Prime Minister Scott Morrison uh, for what was a very a insightful, very useful uh, discussion before our own deliberations. Uh, the interactions that we've had uh, has made it evident that robust bilateral relations uh, between our respective countries, our strategic convergences, and our shared democratic values have all combined to make the Quad a vibrant and substantial framework. We are building an agenda which seeks to further our shared vision of a free, open, and inclusive Indo-Pacific. We are keen to work together to further peace and stability and economic prosperity in the Indo-Pacific through collective efforts which address contemporary issues. In this context, we will continue to support our ASEAN partners in their efforts to uphold peace, stability, and prosperity in the region. Their centrality is important to recognize and reiterate. We reviewed the Quad's ongoing efforts to combat the COVID pandemic and agreed to expedite delivery of safe and affordable vaccines, support capacity building, and augment infrastructure for last mile delivery. Quad's discussions and efforts to build resilient supply chains, enhance availability of trusted critical technologies, counter disinformation, 
and uphold a rules-based multilateral trading system will contribute to fostering global economic resilience. I welcome the Quad's shared desire to address common global threats such as terrorism, strengthen maritime domain awareness, provide timely HADR assistance, and assist countries in the Indo-Pacific in the area of cybersecurity. Taking forward the Quad's positive agenda, which our leaders endorsed last year, we will take steps to strengthen our existing people-to-people -people linkages through education programs and think tank dialogues. As we conclude this very timely and valuable interaction, uh, we will work together to give shape and substance to the Quad's positive agenda to make it, in the words of my Prime Minister, Narendra Modi, a force for global good. Once again, I thank the Government of Australia, and in particular, my friend Marie Spain, for the warmth, hospitality, and excellent arrangements for our visit and meetings. Thank you very much, Minister. And uh, let me ask uh, Minister Hayashi to uh, make some remarks, please. え、まずは改めて価値観を共有をする北朝鮮による核ミサイル活動、東シナ海、南シナ海での一方的な現状変更のコポロミン、ミャンマー情勢など危機の課題が山積をしております。まさに外交の力が問われている時だというふうに思っております。そのような時だからこそ、我々4カ
And uh, I set out the United States vision for a free and open Indo-Pacific, which more than any other region will shape the trajectory of the 21st century. Uh, we talk about a free and open Indo-Pacific a lot. It's worth spending just a second on what that actually means uh, to us, and it's a shared meaning. Uh, it means people will be free in their daily lives uh, and live in open societies. It means the countries will be able to choose their own path and their own partners. It means that goods, ideas, individuals will flow freely in the region, and that problems will be dealt with openly according to the rules of the road that everyone has agreed to. We believe the only way to make that vision a reality is to deepen uh, our engagement with allies and partners who share it. And that's exactly what the Quad is all about. As Indo-Pacific countries, as democracies, as nations who understand how important it is to uphold the international rules that have provided the foundation for decades of shared security and prosperity, it's in our interest to do more together. Um, returning to the region now, even as we continue to work relentlessly to try to resolve the crisis in Ukraine brought about by Russian aggression, uh, and to do that through diplomacy and deterrence. But being here now, even in the midst of that, I think uh, only underscores our commitment to staying focused on the Indo-Pacific. Uh, and indeed, these efforts are part of one whole. Um, one of the reasons we're working so intensely to defend the core principles threatened by Russia's aggression toward Ukraine is because those very same principles are crucial to enduring stability in this region and every other part of the world. Uh, this visit also underscores our commitment to not only meeting the pledges that the Quad has made, uh, but also finding new ways to leverage our unique and combined strengths. And let me just quickly highlight a few uh, that we discussed today. Uh, we will keep working to produce a billion doses of safe, effective COVID-19 vaccines by the end of this year. and to donate 1.2 billion additional doses while increasing our efforts to support the logistics, the infrastructure that's needed to get those shots into arms uh, around the world, the last mile. Each of the Quad countries will play a key role in a meeting that uh, we're convening on Monday uh, on a COVID-19 global action plan, uh, which will drive greater leadership and coordination across regions and sectors to end the pandemic. We'll enhance our collaboration on disaster response and humanitarian assistance, as you've heard. We're doing that right now uh, in the case of the Tonga uh, volcano uh, eruption. We'll strengthen our cooperation on maritime security, both to combat challenges like illegal, unregulated, unreported fishing, and to ensure freedom of navigation and overflight across the region, including in the South and East China Seas. Uh, we've agreed to deepen our efforts to shape the rules and standards around emerging technologies, cybersecurity, which will increasingly touch on all aspects of the lives of our fellow citizens. We'll expand our cooperation with other partners, like ASEAN, whose centrality of the region is enduring, APEC, which the United States will host next year, and in the Pacific Islands. The Quad has been, and always will be, an affirmative partnership, rooted not in opposition to any country or group of countries, but rather in the belief that together we can do more to deliver broad-based progress for people in other countries, in our countries, across the Indo-Pacific addressing the challenges that, that real people face uh, in their lives, helping them seize the opportunities that they want, empowering them to chart their own course. Our efforts today show that the stronger the Quad gets, the more we'll be able to deliver on that promise. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Tony and uh, Jay and uh, Yogi. Uh, for uh, for those remarks. I have uh, four questions uh, to take from uh, the assembled members of uh, the media. And the first uh, name I have on the list is uh, Pablo Vinales uh, from SBS. I can't see you, though. Oh, there you are. I'm sorry. You're, the lights were... Uh, thank you, Minister. Pablo Vinales, SBS World News. Minister Payne, on the crisis in Ukraine, are you able to elaborate what came of discussions today? And to Mr Secretary... You've been quoted as saying you expect Australia to contribute imposing massive costs on Moscow should Russia invade. What would that look like? Do you foresee Magnitsky-style sanctions as part of that? 
Uh, thanks, Pablo. And uh, consistent with the statements the Australian government and I have made previously, uh, I've reiterated our very deep concerns about the Russian military build-up on uh, Ukraine's border. Uh, and again reiterated on calls that we have made uh, to Russia to participate constructively in uh, diplomatic uh, efforts, uh, many of which are uh, us being strongly led by Secretary Blinken and the President uh, of the United States. I've also reiterated Australia's strong support for Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity, uh, and that we will continue to support our allies and partners uh, to deter this sort of aggression uh, and to raise the costs of this kind of uh, behaviour. Tony. Thank you, Maurice. Um, two things. We have been um, pursuing uh, a dual-track approach to the challenge posed by Russia and the forces that it's massed, unprovoked, um, along Ukraine's borders. Diplomacy and dialogue. We would strongly prefer uh, to resolve the, uh, the differences that we have through diplomacy, uh, through dialogue. That is the responsible way to do things. We've made every possible effort uh, to engage Russia, uh, to look at the concerns that it's raised, to share uh, concerns that, uh, that we have, that European partners and allies have, uh, to see if we can't find ways to advance collective security on a reciprocal basis. But at the same time, uh, we've been very uh, clear in building uh, deterrence and, and, and building defense and making it clear to Russia that if it chooses the path of renewed aggression, it will face massive consequences. Um, a number uh, of countries have um, uh, made this clear as well. All of the G7 countries came together, the world's leading democratic economies, uh, to make clear that massive consequences would follow from renewed aggression. So did the European Union. Uh, so did NATO. And working with uh, allies and partners not only in Europe uh, but uh, around the world, including Australia, uh, we have been uh, putting together uh, exactly what those consequences would entail, including uh, economic, uh, financial uh, sanctions, uh, export controls. Uh, we're as well committed to continuing to uh, build up the defensive capacity of Ukraine, as well as reinforcing uh, the defenses of NATO uh, if uh, Russia renews its aggression. But let me just take one second to share why what may seem to be half a world away from here matters here uh, in Australia, in the Indo-Pacific. And as I mentioned a few minutes ago, What's at stake is not simply, as important as it is, Ukraine's territorial integrity, its sovereignty, its independence, but very basic principles that have, in a hard-fought way after two world wars and a Cold War, undergirded security, peace, and prosperity for countries around the world. Principles like one country can't simply change the borders of another by force. Principles like one country can't simply dictate to another its choices, its policies, uh, with whom it will associate. Principles like one country can't exert a sphere of influence to subjugate uh, its neighbors to its will. If we allow those principles to be challenged uh, with impunity, even if it's half, a, half the world away in Europe, that will have an impact here as well. Others are watching. Others are looking to all of us to see how we respond. So that's why it's so important that we have uh, this, uh, this solidarity that we do everything possible through diplomacy uh, to try to uh, avert a conflict and prevent aggression, but equally to be resolute if Russia renews its aggression. Thanks, Tony. Uh, the next question is from Stephen Jedgetts from the ABC. Uh, thank you, Minister. Um, can I ask on Myanmar, what discussions were had uh, by you today on the crisis in Myanmar? Um, and can I ask you, please, Secretary, you have, the United States has obviously imposed fresh sanctions on Myanmar. Uh, that is not something that's been done by your other Quad partners. Does the United States believe that other countries in the region, including your Quad partners, should at least contemplate the step of concerted sanctions on Myanmar uh, to increase pressure on the junta? Thank you. Um, I'm happy to, happy to start. Um, sure. Uh, we did discuss uh, Myanmar uh, today, and um, look, I think it, it is painfully obvious that the uh, developments there are deeply, deeply troubling, and deeply troubling to, um, to all of us. Uh, we've seen the junta double down on repression, 
uh, on violence. Uh, we just had the one-year anniversary uh, of the uh, coup and the junta uh, taking over. Um, I met with some uh, uh, democracy activists just uh, a week ago by video in, um, in Washington and heard again firsthand um, what is, uh, what's happening inside uh, of, uh, of Myanmar. We very much support the, uh, the ASEAN five-point consensus. We need to see it implemented. Um, this is something President Biden is going to focus on uh, in the near future when he um, hosts the uh, ASEAN leaders uh, in Washington. From my perspective, um, perspective of the United States, implementing the five-point consensus, making sure humanitarian assistance uh, can get in, making sure that arms stay out, uh, and engaging the democratic forces in Burma uh, are the things that we need to, to pursue together. I don't purport to speak for my, uh, my colleagues, but I can tell you we had a, a robust discussion and the, uh, the concern is widely shared. Thanks, Tony, and I think um, you've covered off uh, well on the, uh, on the uh, outline of our discussion. I would uh, add that uh, I have also uh, once again uh, acknowledged the continuing detention of Professor Sean Turnell in Myanmar, uh, that Australia, uh, of which we have also uh, just unfortunately marked the first anniversary on the 6th of February, uh, that Australia uh, considers this to be a case of uh, arbitrary detention. Uh, and I have uh, acknowledged and thanked uh, counterparts, uh, all of our counterparts here, for their role in continuing to advocate with the regime for the release of uh, Professor Turnell, uh, as Australia does uh, constantly, consistently, uh, with uh, not, just, uh, not just in Myanmar itself, but globally. Yes, of course, Jay. Uh, well, uh, I think we are all agreed on the importance of the democratic transition which was underway in Myanmar and uh, clearly uh, the fact that the country has moved in a different direction is something which troubles all of us. Uh, we all, I think, also very strongly back the ASEAN position uh, on, on uh, Myanmar and their efforts to engage. But where uh, we are concerned, India is concerned as an immediate land border neighbor, uh, we have some very specific concerns on Myanmar, which also guides our thinking. Uh, concerns about insurgents uh, operating there, who some months ago ki you know, killed a very senior military officer and his family. Concerns about the COVID uh, and the lack of vaccination on our common border. Concerns about a humanitarian situation, which is arising from food shortages. So I think those are also concerns which we take into account. And uh, where we are concerned, we don't follow a policy of national sanctions. 